Welcome home, my little hellhounds. I just wanted to let you know that it's now Movember, and Movember is the leading charity changing the face of men's health. And this Movember, I'm joining them, growing a moustache to raise money, and together we can make a difference for men's health in prostate cancer, testicular cancer, mental health, and suicide prevention. Help me stop men dying too young. If you would like to donate, I will leave a link below so you can get more info and donate what you can. And thank you so much for your support. Anyways, tonight we have three scary stories to sink our hellish teeth into. If you have any scary stories you want narrated on the channel, then submit them to reddit r slash home of scares and follow me on twitter at home of scares also if you like this content then don't forget to subscribe and click the like button and don't forget to smash that bell icon so you get notified every time i upload remember grow a mo to save a bro. Now, let's get right into it. Twick or tweet posted by Arusius I heard the doorbell ring and reached for the bowl of candy on the side table opening the door I found a small boy dressed in a bed sheet his eye holes were cut out in the big unmatched way that often precedes a homemade costume and the edges of his glasses poked through the holes at the edges. He held his pillowcase out to me and shook it. I chuckled a little and looked down at the small ghost that stood begging on my front porch. Oh my, what a scary ghost. Did you come to haunt my house? The ghost stood silently until the large, obliging woman standing on the steps behind him prompted what do you say Derek then he remembered twick or tweet he yelled I laughed as I threw some candy into his pillowcase he laughed at it and turned to leave as his mother beamed at me you're a dear it means a lot to him I waved a hand at her a couple of bucks a week to make a kid happy is nothing. Same time tomorrow, she laughed, like clockwork, rain or shine, and then sneezed hugely and shook her head. Getting sick, I asked. But she waved it off and said it's just allergies or something, as they made their way to the house on their daily route. Derek has been coming to my house every day, at 5 p.m. for the last two years. All the neighbors kept a little candy for him because they know it meant a lot to him. Everyone in the neighborhood knows Derek. You can see him out riding his tricycle under his mother's watchful eye or running to meet his father in the yard so he can wrap him in a big bear hug. The neighbors ask him to help them with their yard work or paint their house and thank him when he refuses the money they offer him and hops off towards home. They've been there for his family on the bad days too when he has his tantrums or his breakdowns but Derek's good days have certainly outweighed the bad ones. Derek has autism spectrum disorder one of the more severe types, his mother says, and if a little trick or treat helps him 
get through the day, then most of us are happy to help. I closed the door and went about my evening routine, dinner, laundry, tidying up, and then dishes. As I was washing up, I couldn't help smiling as I saw Derek walking back to his house with his mother, a half full pillowcase swinging from his fist. It was hard to see his expression under the ghost costume, but I was sure that he was smiling and chatting animately to his mother. She rested a hand on his back of his head and nodded, laughing as they walked back to the house. She sneezed again as I watched them, and almost sympathetically I sneezed as well. Another sneeze followed in close proximity. I shook my head and hoped I wasn't getting sick too. The next day, however, found me sick as a dog. It was raining, the sky was a black mass of dark purple clouds and I woke up with a racking headache and my head full of snot. Must have been a summer cold, I thought. But as the day went on, I wondered if it wasn't flu or something. I had soup for lunch along with some NyQuil and an over-the-counter cold medicine. I plopped down on the couch with my bowl of soup and a cup of tea as I tried to nurse myself back to health with a dose of TV and rest. The rain was coming down in sheets outside and I let the pounding on my windows soothe me to sleep as the TV droned and the NyQuil did its work. I woke up with a start when someone knocked on my door. I'd left the lights off and though it could have been much past afternoon, it was very dark in the house. The person knocked again, but my legs wobbled like an old man when I up. I sat right back down and looked over at the clock groggily. It was 5.01 and realised that it must be Derek for his daily visit. His mother must be crazy to take him out in this weather. As he kept knocking, I finally called from the couch. I'm not feeling well today, buddy. Let me take a rain check till tomorrow, okay? The knocking paused and I heard him say, Twick or tweet, from the front porch. It was him all right, but my head was so spinny that I couldn't even get up from the couch. I tried to appease him a few more times, even tried to get up again to no avail, but finally I just laid back and tried to ignore him. That didn't seem to stop him though, and after nearly 10 minutes of knocking, I was just about out of patience. I was considering trying to get off the couch again, when finally it stopped. I heard his footsteps slowly walking down the stairs and started to get up again, wanting to stop him before he got hurt. I dozed back off again, though, and the next thing I knew, the clock read 4am. The rain had stopped, I wobbled up and managed to make it to the bathroom before I pissed my pants. I staggered to the kitchen to make some more medicine and have a drink of water before collapsing on the couch again and falling into a muddled sort of half sleep. I was thinking about a weird dream I'd just had, but before I could think too much about it, I fell asleep again and didn't wake up until my blaring alarm forced me awake. I had to wobble to my bedroom and turn it off, and the act drained me enough to keep me in bed most of the morning. I took it easy that day, called out from work again and watched TV in my bedroom. As five o'clock crept closer and closer, I started to feel like my old self again and figured I'd make it up to poor Derek after leaving him hanging yesterday. I got up, put on some fresh pyjamas and made sure there was still candy in the bowl before Derek got there. 
I even uncovered some full-sized candy bars I'd been saving and put them at the top of the bowl just for him. I turned on the TV downstairs to wait and as a five o'clock came, I figured I'd hear his knock any minute. As five o'clock turned into 5.30, I started to get a little worried. I went to the door and looked up and down the block, but there was no sign of Derek or his mother. Their car was gone too. And I wondered if maybe they'd went somewhere. I hoped Derek was okay. Maybe he'd gotten sick after running around in the rain yesterday afternoon. I gave it only minimal thought as I went back inside to start my afternoon routine. Maybe they just went on a trip or something, I told myself, as I prepared dinner. For one, yet again, I'd barely started preparing the chicken when I heard a knock at the door that made me feel better. Derek was running a little late today. As I walked to the door, I saw the top of a sheeted head and grabbed the bowl with a little chuckle. I had just said how glad I was to see him and started to apologise for yesterday. When I saw that, the front porch was empty. I looked around the porch, seeing if maybe he'd hidden behind the chairs. But when I saw that no one was there, I went back inside. I shook my head. Maybe I'd been hearing things. But no sooner had I gotten back to work than I heard a knock at the door again. Twick or tweet. I heard him trumpet from the door and I walked back to get the candy with a big grin on my face. Well, you got me. I wasn't expecting you to. No one was there. I looked around the porch, along the front, down the road, both ways, but Derek was nowhere to be found. I might have suspected any other kids of playing a joke on me, but jokes weren't Derek's thing. He had cried last year at the 4th of July block party when I'd pretended to get his nose. Only a big hug and half a dozen apologies, plus the return of his nose had made it all the better. I still had a very thorough look around the porch before I went back inside and started dinner again. The next time I heard a knock was six o'clock. Again, the porch was empty. By seven, I was getting annoyed. I remembered myself that if it was Derek, that he didn't know any better. I needed to be patient with him. I was more curious as to why his mother was letting him do this. Was she mad that I hadn't answered the door yesterday? By 7.30 I had received five knocks and still no one on my porch. I left the candy bowl on the doormat, figuring it was probably what they wanted anyway. I went back in to eat my dinner. My dinner sat uneaten by 8 o'clock because I'd made five trips to the front door to see who was knocking. As the sun started to set and the knocks continued, I felt a chill run up my spine despite the July heat. What I had thought was a prank was beginning to scare me. I'd never believed in the supernatural, but this was starting to rattle me. As 8 creeps towards 9, The knocks came every 10 minutes, then every 5 minutes, then every minute. I turned up the TV and tried to ignore it, but it was impossible. The cries of twick or tweet still came every so often, but at this point I was sure it was kids making fun of Derek. Kids can be so cruel after all but I had nearly had enough of this little joke by 9.30. Someone was slamming their fist on my door, hard enough to rattle it in the frame. I took up a fire poker and stalked across the door in an angry clatter of bare feet. 
I was done with this, and if I needed to threaten some kids to make it stop, then so be it. I threw the door open, lifting the poker to strike, but there were no laughing teenagers or snot-nosed brats to be found, just a boy in a bedsheet with a pillowcase. The front porch light cast his shadow back across the porch and the sight of him here at night gave me a shiver. His sheet was dirty, mud crusting around the bottom and spattering the lower parts. The left eye of his glasses were broken in a spider web of cracks. His pillowcase seemed to be leaking water as he stood there and his silence was almost as unsettling as his appearance. Gone was the fastidity, clean boy in a ghost costume that I'd become accustomed to. Something about this ghost boy was a little more unsettling. Little late for trick-or-treating, wouldn't you say, Casper? Derek didn't say a thing. You haven't been the one knocking on my door all afternoon, have you? Still... Derek didn't say anything. Does your mother know you're out this late? She'd probably be pretty worried if she... Why didn't you open your door yesterday? He asked. And for a moment I was taken aback. Derek rarely said more than four words at a time. Often not even in an order that one could understand but here he had delivered a whole sentence just for me. His voice, normally high and childish, with its slight stutter, was harsh and croaking as it came from within the stained ghost costume. He sounded like a river toad, more than a little boy. I took a step back as I tried to find my voice. What? Why didn't you open your door yesterday? I was alone in the wane, and you ignored me. Why didn't you open your door yesterday? Why didn't you open your door yesterday? Why didn't you open your door yesterday? His croak became a scream, and I slipped on the runner rug as I tried to backpedal into the house. My tailbone came into sudden contact with the hardwood floor, and as I looked back, I could see the ghost boy slowly making his way towards me. Twickle tweet, twickle tweet, give me something good to eat. If you don't, I don't care you, I will drag you down somewhere. The little boy ghost chanted. I hurried back on the runner rug, bringing my foot up and out as I pushed the door closed in one swift motion. As it slammed shut, I heard the same run over cat scream as Derek slammed into my door, sing-songing his terrible melody and punctuating the end of each verse with a loud scream. I stumbled to my phone and called the police. I explained to the operator what was going on and even let her hear the background noises. She told me to calm down and that she would send a patrol car around momentarily. I thanked her as I cradled the phone in my lap and she promised to stay on the line until the police arrived. I sat huddled in the living room as the slamming and screaming continued at the front door and time seemed to stretch on endlessly five minutes ten minutes fifteen minutes went by and still the pounding and wailing came from the front door the lights inside began to flicker and pulse as the monstrous voice rose to a crescendo without warning the bulb above my head popped and shattered glass fell all over me. I pulled my knees to my chest, put my face against my knees and sobbed uncontrollably 
as the racket went on and on around me. Then, as suddenly as it started, it stopped. The silence was deafening around me. When I lifted my face from my knees, I expected to see him inches from me. He wasn't though, and as I looked around, I laughed a little and realised I didn't know what to do now. I had been tormented by some Twilight Zone kid whom I had inadvertently snubbed the day before and now that it was over the whole situation was just ridiculous. Then someone knocked on the door. I looked at the door over the back of the couch and felt a spasm of terror rush through me. The person at the door knocked again and it wasn't the usual pounding rush I'd come accustomed to. As I got up to walk towards the door, I could imagine the trepidation was the same as Poe's character in The Raven. The knocking, knocking, knocking at my chamber door came a third time, and when someone spoke from the other side, I jumped backward. Hello, this is the police. We're responding to a call about a prowler. I relaxed a little then and opened the door to reveal a male police officer standing where my ghostly knocker had stood a moment before. Thank God you're here. I swept my eyes across the porch before settling back on him. The knocking has been going on all day. Someone has been knocking on my door since five o'clock this afternoon and it's become progressively more violent. It only just stopped as you pulled up, so I guess you must have seen someone on my porch, right? The officer gave me a questionable look. I'm sorry, but I didn't see anyone when I pulled up. Did you say this has been going on all day? He asked, taking a notepad from his pocket. Since five o'clock. Are you sure you didn't see anyone? The knocking stopped literally a minute ago. The person knocking would have to be there when you pulled up. Nope, didn't see anyone, he said, making some notes. You don't have any idea who it might be, do you? Neighbourhood kids or something? Well, I don't know why he would be out this late, but when I opened the door to chase them off, I could have sworn that Derek Hughes from next door was here. He seemed very upset, and he was wearing his ghost costume too. Ghost costume? The officer seemed surprised, and when I explained to him, his face became almost angry. No, it couldn't be him, he said, putting away his pad and turning to go. Wait, it had to be him, I said, reaching out to grab his arm. He was in the ghost costume he's worn for the last two years. The voice underneath was identical to his. Couldn't be him, the cop said, pulling away again. I was there yesterday when his mother called. He was killed yesterday while he crossed the street. My blood ran cold. What? I said, taking a step back. No, he, he was here. I saw him. He, I helped the paramedics load him into the ambulance myself. His sheet was covered in blood and his mother was crying so hard. I thought we'd have to load her next. I don't know what you're playing at, but it's not funny. He turned to go when the little ghost stepped out of the shadows between a banister and started singing again. Twick or tweet, twick or tweet, give me something good to eat. If you don't, I don't care you, I'll drag you down somewhere. The cop came back in a hurry when I started screaming. He couldn't see the boy, his bloody sheet clinging to his broken form and his high-pitched voice, undulating, like a strangled animal. 
he helped the paramedics load me into an ambulance when I wouldn't stop screaming too. I can still see him now, actually. He's hunched in the corner of my room and humming his little song. I don't dare sleep while he's there. If I close my eyes, he'll make good on his threats and drag me away to something worse than this. I can feel my eyelids getting heavy. I won't be able to hold out much longer and after seven sleepless days I know the end will be soon. He stopped humming and his lenses are boring into me. He knows it's almost time to Tattletale posted by Dependent Ad 87492 Remember the creepy game Tattletale? Yeah, it became real. Here's my story. My name is Andrew Lance. I'm 19 years old and it was coming close to Christmas and I was 18 at the time. So, I really want to remember my childhood so I got a tattletale I don't know why I did it but he seemed cute to be honest but there were some events for five nights night one I woke up to hear footsteps I got my bat and went out into the living room there was someone in the living room so I did the classic you picked the wrong house intruder well 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 Andrew it's me Joe Joe Ronaldo my man how's it going not much sorry if I intruded it's fine just tell me when you're staying the next time okay alrighty what the fuck is this? I really miss my childhood, so I got this tattletale. Well, that's kind of sweet, yeah. Night two. My phone started ringing. I picked up. Hello? Get rid of that Furby. You mean tattletale? It doesn't matter. Remember, Mama from the game. Yeah, yeah what about her? It's not just her this time. Then he hangs up. What does he mean by not just her this time? Then I heard some weird noise coming from the basement. Of course, I went to check it out. It was Mama Tattletail. All broken and messed up. She was saying, <laughs> Help me. Me. I did, and repaired her. Thank you, stranger. No problem. I should suggest to you go to bed. Uh, okay, and I did. Night three. I heard some creepy laughing. I don't know who it could be, or what it could be. I quietly opened my door and snuck a peek to the kitchen. There was this moth animatronic in my fucking kitchen. I slowly went back to my room and quietly closed my door and hid under my bed. A few moments later I heard, I know someone's in here. Open up, mortal. I stayed quiet. Hmm. Maybe I got the wrong house. I think I did. Fuck. Then I heard the front door open and slam. I ran to Mama Tattletail and said to her, Who was that?
that moth animatronic that was Mothra Trap, the most dangerous spring trap clone on earth. I, I, I need to take a nap. Um, okay. Night four. This time I heard glasses breaking and I heard two voices speaking. A uh, Mothra Trap. This is why Hide and Seek exists. This house doesn't look abandoned. Did I say anything about this house being abandoned? I said I got the wrong house. Hmm. The wrong house with the same thing he got for Christmas. There's over like 1,000 of those things. I was hiding under the bed which in hindsight was such a great move of me. Oh yeah, you didn't check this room more. Here, let me break the door down. Then they broke the door down. We know you're in here, come out. There's no one in here, shut up. So not gonna say anything, eh? I'll make you then he shoots a pistol on my rug. Hmm, I guess you're right. Maybe they're out of town. Yeah, that's what I was trying to say. Then the front door opened and closed once again. I got out from under the bed and went to Mama Tattletail. It's like all hell is breaking loose. Hope you can survive the last one. What? what? There's one more night of this. So if I were you, I would find a good spot to hide until he's gone. Oh, okay. The final night. So I found this hidden room a few weeks ago and thought I could hide there until the night passes. While I was sleeping in the hidden room, I heard a bang and a demonic roar. Then something with a demonic voice saying, I know you're here somewhere. Come on out. Ha 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 ha. I was fucking scared for my life. The idiots didn't even look under here. Huh. <laughs> but I'll keep looking. A few hours later, a miracle happened. Uh, I guess we failed to kill this bounty. Huh. <laughs> Maybe next time maybe next time then the door opened and closed for the last time I got out from my hiding place but Mama Tattletail and Tattletail were gone I don't know where they've gone but listen to me if you see a purple Furby named Tattletail don't buy it Two years ago, I encountered a Wendigo, posted by Wasted Account 2. So one thing before I tell my story, I put Wendigo in quotes because I live in Central California in historically Milwaukee land, which from what little I know about Wendigos is quite a ways from where they're normally seen. So if someone knows of similar Milwaukee folklore, I'd love to hear it. Anyways, here goes. Two years ago, I and a group of three other friends decided to go Humboldt County for a weekend. We go see Fern Canyon tour the HSU campus and have a fun four day weekend camping on the beach on Sunday it's time to come home 
it was a 12 hour drive to where I was dropping my friends off which I drove the entire duration of by the time I dropped them off and start the last hour long drive back to my house it's a little after 9pm and completely dark out now the two routes that someone can take between where my friends live and where I live cross two different bridges over a lake I decide to take the main highway as it's a little longer than the other road but has fewer turns to navigate the difference between the two routes was only about two miles or so as I'm about halfway point of the bridge I noticed my headlights there's something on the shoulder I slow down a bit to make sure I'm able to move over if needed and as I get closer I'm able to make out what it is standing on the side of the road was a seven to eight foot tall bipedal humanoid creature it looked emaciated with ghost white skin that was stretched tight across its bones now I obviously wasn't going to stop and get a closer look at it but when I looked in the rear view mirror to see if I could make out any other features on this thing there was nothing now it had completely vanished the rest of my drive home was uneventful and when I woke up the next morning I brushed off what I saw as exhaustion from the long weekend and the 12 hours of driving I had done before seeing whatever it was that is until Tuesday when I was talking with one of the friends who had gone on the trip she told me that one of her friends had been driving on the other bridge Monday night and saw a creature exactly like what I had seen that was when I told her what I had seen the night before her friend and she suggested it might have been a wendigo before then I had maybe heard the name once or twice but hadn't paid much attention as I wasn't much interested in cryptids or ghost stories before then and wasn't really on the internet enough to know what they were And that's it for tonight, my little hellhounds. Thanks for listening. Don't forget to check out the Movember link below. If you liked these scary stories, then don't forget to like and subscribe and submit your stories to reddit r slash home of scares and follow me on Twitter at home of scares now good night my little hellhounds <laughs>